figures. And she'd be the one. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top five U fan theories that turned out to be true and five that turned out to be false. What do you want? from me. I'm sorry. I'm trying to change my past mistakes. You really don't get it. Tell me. I am trying to. You're, you're taunting me while I try to save a woman. You don't save, Joe. For this list, we're looking at the speculation surrounding the plot and its twists of the Netflix psychological thriller series. A spoiler alert is now in effect. Were any of your theories right? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Reese has an accomplice. False. It's you. It's been you. After the big reveal of Reese as the Eat the Rich killer, fans began to speculate whether or not he had a partner in crime. Lady Phoebe, the incredibly kind and bubbly one in the group, was even considered at one point because her likability was suspect. You think you know me, Dawn? What am I gonna do next? Come on, tell me! On the other hand, Kate's reaction to Gemma's murder caused some viewers to question whether or not she was the real killer, enlisting Joe to help cover up the crime. But our favorite theory is probably Love Quinn teaming up with Reese, mostly because we wanted to see her alive and seeking revenge. Alas, none of these theories panned out. Sometimes things just don't work out with the person the way you dream, you know. Number 9. The Quinns Track Down Joe True Back in season two, we learned that Love's parents, Ray and Dottie Quinn, were very wealthy and well-connected. In season three, we only see Dottie since the couple divorced. This is what happens when you marry the wrong man. Do you disagree? About dad? No, no, he treated you horribly. That's why I don't speak to him anymore. The first episode of season four shows a hired fixer confronting Joe in London. While Elliot doesn't mention Love's mother, he says that he was hired by Ray Quinn. What I'd like is to uh, just be done, you know? Not hurt anyone anymore. Not even you. He surprises Joe by giving him the identity of Jonathan Moore and telling him to start anew. Definitely not the outcome Mr. Quinn had in mind, but luckily for Joe's sake, Elliot was ready to retire. I am now officially an Literally, above all that I wish you an end to suffering and the roots of suffering. Number 8. Nadia is involved in the murders. False. As the expert on murder mysteries, we just knew Nadia had to be in on the Eat the Rich Killer crimes. She was more knowledgeable about the genre than her literature professor, Dr. Jonathan Moore. What am I missing? Well, it is a formula, but the formula is fun. It draws you in, it hides the social commentary under the puzzle. Being a hard-working student juggling more than one job, she wasn't the biggest of the elite. Plus, we found out she had a secret relationship with Malcolm. I've written him a letter that I shouldn't have, and it's in there, and it's amongst all of his things, and, and now it's going to be found, and it's going to end up a headline, and then where does it leave me? Was her grief just a performance, and she was actually just stressed about possibly leaving behind something tying her to his murder? Nope. She was totally innocent. Well, until Joe destroyed her life in the last moments of the part two finale. She refused to speak in her own defense. Still hasn't spoken from prison. Like I said, smart. Number seven, Joe finds a new obsession. True. We know Joe Goldberg well enough to predict that he'll become infatuated with someone else. Hello there. Who are you? He falls hard for an idealized version of a real person, stalks her, kills people that make her life difficult, and ultimately swoops in to charm them into a relationship. But it never lasts. His girlfriends, and in Love's case, his wife, seem to end up six feet under, with the exception of season one's Karen. Of course she takes the high road. She knew all along. Karen and I don't see the world the same way. But you? He begins the fourth season still hung up on Marianne, following her across the world. However, she's not exactly happy to see him, so he settles down in London and eventually meets Kate. You know, it is quite sweet, actually, you galloping around after me like some sort of white knight. <sighs> you are. You're going to be so disappointed when you realize that women in the 21st century can take care of themselves. Joe actually struggles to resist falling in love, but fails in the end. Is Kate his one and only? Probably not. We keep each other good. We keep each other good. Yeah, I, I do actually mean that. Number six, Ellie returns. False. 
we met the lovely Ellie Alves back in season two when Joe, sorry, Will, was in his LA era. She's smart, funny, brutally honest, ambitious, and by the end of the season, traumatized. My sister is gone. You cannot go home. CPS is not great either. Fans were hopeful when Joe mentioned he still secretly sent money to Ellie in season three, but sadly she didn't make an appearance. Could they be saving her for season four? As we found out, no, they weren't. Joe makes a casual remark about her, but that's it. Most of my professor tricks are one trick I picked up spending time with a girl named Ellie. Wind them up, let them go. Teenagers will argue both sides for you. Showrunner Sarah Gamble revealed that the writers had a plan for Ellie to return. However, actress Jenna Ortega was a little busy filming, among other projects, a little show called Wednesday. Maybe you've heard of it, but Gamble said there is a chance we'll see Ms. Alves in the future. Are you offering to help? What's in it for me? <laughs> I'll owe you one. Number five, Marianne rejects Joe after he finds her. True. After the wild events in the season three finale, the episode closes with Joe in Paris lamenting about his search for Marianne. Even though Love told her about Joe's penchant for obsession and murder, we didn't expect Marianne to want anything to do with him ever again. But our delusional boy Joe thought he still had a chance. We changed. The buttoned up Marjorie Linda librarian was gone. But it was you. He finds her in London, and she immediately runs away. After cornering her, she made it clear that she had no intention of being with him. And to everyone's surprise, he let her go. You looked at me with so much fear. I couldn't stand it. I let you go to prove to you I'm not that man. I would never hurt you. Before he tracked her down, she didn't bother turning him in, likely because he was seemingly dead but also probably to avoid any association with the Quinn Goldbergs and their craziness. Did you believe love's lies? No, you knew it was a trap. You would have said anything to get out of here. A luxury I don't seem to have. Number four, Joe meets his half-brother Jacob. False. One of the more talked about season four theories was the possibility that Joe's half-brother Jacob would show up. I mean, I like it, it's creative. Joe doesn't have a brother. You're on some season five stees right there. Oh, I guess he, oh, you're right. He does have a half brother. Uh, oh snap. Fans speculated that Jakey would find Joe and try to get back at him for murdering their mother, though her death has never been mentioned or confirmed. Maybe he could be posing as a student in one of Joe's classes or a part of the new group of wealthy elites. Let the games begin. Which one of these people will I hate the most? Many posited that he could be the real Eat the Rich Killer, having developed a similar appetite for murder like his big brother. Of course, none of these turned out to be true. In the season four finale, Joe's whole life has been carefully revealed to make him appear sympathetic. Could Jacob see this and reach out? Time will tell. That is a really good theory. It's the best one I've heard so far. You get the crown. Number three, Joe hallucinates love. True. Joe has had some real head trips throughout the series, so we expected a similarly surreal moment in season four. Whether it's caused by drugs, alcohol, or a fever dream brought on by the measles, he's hallucinated people from his past, other versions of himself, and his victims, namely Beck. Don't look at me, it's your dream. What did you do this time? Love fans hoped for her ghost to appear this season, and we got our wish. After getting taunted by Gemma and Beck, the former Mrs. Quinn Goldberg pops up in Joe's newest glass cage. Hi, Joe. What the f is happening to me? <laughs> You're going through it. It's hard, but you'll get there. She rightfully guilt trips him for, you know, killing her, then making him face his true nature. Here's hoping she turns up again in season five. Somebody does need to die for this to end for good. Number two, Love Quinn Lives. False. As we just mentioned, there are many U fans who were devastated and even furious that Love Quinn died at the end of season three. But in the world of television, characters aren't always dead. So there was a chance she pulled a Candace Stone and survived somehow. Here. Alive. Yeah. So, uh, I think we have some unfinished business to talk about. We didn't actually see her going up in flames along with their Madre Linda home. She could have come to at the last minute, right? So I hear you, like I, I, I know that you love love and like, you know, we, we forever stand love, but you're wrong. Or are you? 
Well, this was just wishful thinking. Sarah Gamble confirmed that Love is indeed dead. But at least we got to see Victoria Pedretti reprise her role in spectral form. I understand if you're angry. I can't be angry, Joe. You made sure of that. I'm sorry. You are? I never wanted you to die. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Joe has a stalker. True, the tables have turned. Evan Ness. I know this app. It's one of those high security chat apps that erases everything you say. How did I get this on my phone? Hello, you. Who is this? Joe is writing a murder mystery. False. No, Joe decided to cast himself in a real life whodunit instead. A circle of privileged suspects, a frame job, and now a cryptic invite evoking a British murder mystery. <laughs> I'm in a whodunit the lowest form of literature. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the Fight Club Theory, true. Remember when we talked about Joe's proclivity for hallucinating? Turns out there's a lot more to that. I should lie down. You sure about that? This can't be good. Some predicted Joe had a dissociative identity disorder, and they were correct. Joe spent most of season four truly believing someone was stalking and trying to frame him, encouraging him to let his inner killer run free. In the fifth episode, he learns Reese Montrose is the Eat the Rich killer. Hey, welcome. My pleasure. Is your head clear now? You ready for our plan, Joe? Reese has an agenda, but he also just wants a friend. But after Joe finally snaps and kills him, it's revealed that his version of Reese was all in his head. In flashbacks, he was obsessed with the real Reese Montrose, and another more violent personality formed. Well, you pulled all that darkness you hated into this vessel you admired because you knew that the end game was facing yourself, didn't you? Where you go? All the worst bits in the little package you don't mind having a pint with. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.